Hey everyone, so today we get to talk about a brand new Pokemon Presents that's happening next week. And if that's all you need to know, then you already got the news from the headlines, so why the hell are you watching this video? But let's talk about what we can actually expect to see at this Direct, what I hope to see. Uh, I guess a Direct is calling it weird that's like a pokemon direct but pokemon presents uh and before we get into that i gotta remind you we are giving away a switch oled system if you would like to win a switch oled system it's very simple to enter just subscribe seriously it, it, it's that easy just subscribe to the channel we'll announce the winner in a live stream in early october All right, folks, so I'm just glancing at the tweet from this coming from the official Pokemon account in North America, and it says, Attention trainers! Tune in to our YouTube channel on Wednesday, August 18th at 6 a.m., very early, uh, Pacific time, for a Pokemon Presents video presentation featuring hashtag Pokemon Brilliant Diamond, hashtag Pokemon Shining Pearl, and hashtag Pokemon Legends Arceus, folks. Oh boy, it's time. We just had J.C. Smith earlier this week in an interview uh, who is one of the uh, you know PR directors essentially at the Pokemon Company tell us that we were going to hear about Pokemon Legends Arceus soon. And then here we are less than like two days later and we now know we're getting to hear about it next week along with obviously Pokemon Shine, you know, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. So... That's the news. Uh, if that's all you care about, see ya. Have a good day. Catch you in the next video. If you care about my thoughts on this, let's dive a little bit deeper. So Pokemon uh, Shining Pearl and Brilliant Diamond. Let's, let's start there because those games come out later this year. I think either November 18th or 19th. Sorry, I don't remember the exact date off the time I have, but it's one of those two days I'm pretty sure of. Uh, th those games obviously had a bit of a tepid reception from Pokemon fans. And the reasons were obvious. Uh, if you look at all the prior Pokemon remaster remakes, uh, there's been significantly more work done. Traditionally, what happens like with like Leaf Green or something like that is that whatever the current generation of Pokemon games are, the new games are basically remade in that generation's art style and in that generation's engine and then obviously uh they add in the new features oftentimes that are in that generation so as an example uh people would expect a gen 4 remake like this to be remade or remastered in the style of pokemon sword and shield now they won't necessarily add like any open world um, hub aspect to it because they don't fundamentally change the game but they would add things in like gigantamaxing and stuff like that there would be a, a, an extra feature in the game like that it wouldn't necessarily have all the features but they would have some of them and that's just one off the top of my head there's many in sword and shield they could have picked and chose from uh, but that's not what happened and it didn't happen because it turns out that pokemon shining pearl and brilliant diamond or brilliant diamond and shining pearl uh are actually going to be uh made by an outside studio and this is the very first time a mainline core pokemon game new or otherwise has been handled by an outside company aka not game freak the primary studio behind pokemon uh, and it was really weird because I think we saw that first before we saw anything else when they were showing off this stuff, I think back in like April or March. And it was really confusing because it's like, really, we're getting this chibi style, which by the way, fits with the original games, but also doesn't really feel, it feels almost like a fresh coat of paint more so than actually remaking or remastering the game. Like people, people have been wanting these Gen 4 remakes for a long time and they weren't necessarily happy with this because they were like, hey, look, it, it's going to be Pokemon Sword and Shield style and that's not it. Uh, but we found out why and that's because they later announced this game. Folks, this is Pokemon Legends Arceus. And Pokemon Legends Arceus is a promising game. It is an ambitious game, and it's one the Pokemon Company is spending more time developing than maybe any prior Pokemon game. Uh, it is open world, or open air, or however they want to you know, advertise it as, because that's what Breath of the Wild was open air, not open world. Okay, same difference. You just don't want to use common terminology. Uh, but it's, it's an open world Pokemon game. Uh, we know a few base premises behind it, but otherwise we haven't really heard about this game since outside of the fact that it's landing on January 28th, 2021. And someone's going to be like, you know that date, but not the shining, the brilliant diamond, shining pearl. 
Yeah, you can tell which game I'm more excited for, right? Um, because that's th this is the game that has the chance to really reinvigorate my love of Pokemon. Because I fell out of love with Pokemon quite a while ago. And while I've, I've dabbled here and there, and like, let's go Pikachu, let's go Eevee, I thought were pretty good, but I, you, know, you can call me a Gen 1-er if you want. Uh, in the end, I haven't really fallen back in love with Pokemon, uh, but this is sort of the kind of game, an open-world Pokemon game, that I've wanted since I was a child. And we talked recently, uh, Eric and I, on the Nintendo Prime podcast about our hopes and dreams, so I'll put a link down to that podcast, uh, and maybe with a timestamp taking you directly to... Uh, the exact point where we started talking about our hopes for Pokemon Legends Arceus. But the biggest thing uh, that I w really want to see is I want to see the frame rate cleaned up. I know that's you know a minor thing, and having a smooth frame rate does not make it a great game. But one thing that was very obvious in that reveal footage is the game felt a little bit choppy. Now, again, it's like pre-alpha, not even beta, obviously. Uh, it, it's it's going to be smoother than that at launch, or at least that's what we should think, because it's weird to see a game shown off from a Nintendo-owned IP, they own the rights to Pokemon, uh, to see a game shown off that looks like that at reveal. It's very rare to see that. Nintendo games always show their best foot forward, as do most game reveals, right? Whether it's a cinematic trailer or actual gameplay, they try to put their best foot forward uh, and that was their best foot forward, which was copying Breath of the Wild's reveal trailer in many aspects. And then, well, um, having the frame rate tip a lot. Now, that's not saying they haven't cleaned it up since then. They very well could have. And that footage could have been from months prior rather than more recent at the time. So the game might have already been in a better state by that point. And what's, what worries me maybe the most about Pokemon Legends Arceus is not only the ambition of the game, but that it was developed large part during a pandemic. And I'm not sure, you know, Game Freak has like this reputation where they make quality games, right? I'm not gonna sit here and say Pokemon games aren't quality. Pokemon Sword and Shield is a quality video game. Uh, I wouldn't say it's necessarily all the ambitions that we hoped they would have went for. And I'm not going to say the texture detail is always the best for their first HD home console style Pokemon game. Things could have been better. But at the end of the day, it's still a quality experience. Game Freak also tends to lean a lot on sameness and repeating things. And um, a lot of this isn't even their fault. They are really not as large of a studio as they should be for one of the biggest IPs in video game history. I think they're just 150 developers. Maybe they've grown a little bit since then, but that's not that many developers considering they have multiple Pokemon projects going at once. Uh, and this is definitely a triple A worthy IP. Um, this stuff is, you know, there's very few games on the level of Pokemon. Um, very few. I mean, you could talk about maybe Mario Kart is up there. Uh, you know, probably things like, you know, obviously Grand Theft Auto you would say is probably past Pokemon, although uh, Pokemon might get the same amount of sales just with multiple releases versus like GTA 5 getting like 80, 100 million sales. But that's over the course of like seven, eight years. So, you know, there's a, a pattern there. Uh, where obviously they can continue to sell one game for a very long time, like a Minecraft style game versus Pokemon that would sell like 15, 20 million a pop uh, every single release, or at least 10 million is usually like the low ball number for a core uh, mainline game. Even Let's Go Pikachu, Let's Go Eevee, I think sold like 12 or 13 million. So um, yeah, I, I'm pretty excited uh, about the game, but I'm also cautiously, um, cautiously optimistic because it's what I want, but it's also do I trust Game Freak to do it right? Uh, there were enough red flags in Sword and Shield to be like, mm, maybe not, but also maybe yes, because maybe those red flags existed because honestly they were more focused on Legends Arceus. So what I have heard through the grapevine is that Pokemon Legends Arceus has actually been in development since before Sword and Shield came out. Now obviously the team would have been smaller than maybe only 20 or 30 people, but I have a, a, a sneaking understanding that this game has had at least three to three and a half years of development and it'll almost be four years by the time it actually comes out which is a crazy long time for pokemon because they usually stick to a very strict release schedule the thing is though legends arceus kind of fits outside of that normal schedule right like i think the reason they wanted to come out 
in January and they want it to release on January 28th is because they want a majority of the team working on it to move on to the next Pokemon game. Uh, whatever's coming out next year. I'm, I'm, I mean, God, you we talk about Legends Arceus in January. There could be another Let's Go game coming out uh, at the end of 2022 for all we know. So uh, they, they want to get that team quickly moving on. So that's why it's such a early in the year, first month of the, uh, a month release. Uh, and they didn't want to stack it. I mean, maybe they thought they could get it out this holiday, but they didn't want to stack it on top of um, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl because it would have probably overshadowed it. Maybe. I have no idea. I think Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl still has a chance to crack 10 million in sales uh, but we'll have to wait and see on that front legend arceus to me uh is where the hopes of the potential future of the pokemon franchise lie and i think that's what's exciting about having a pokemon direct next week wednesday is that we are potentially going to see the future of pokemon or what the future of pokemon could be if they do this right if they bomb out it flames out it barely sells in comparison to other pokemon games you know like three four million yeah we're probably done with that concept and they're not going to come back to it because i have a feeling that this is going to be the most expensive game they've ever made and it's not necessarily tied directly to the anime uh like a lot of other pokemon games are that's why they're on such a strict schedule because they have the animated series and the games running side by side and, and they're supposed to kind of co-support each other and that helps keep both of them relevant um, but yeah, I, I do think that this is the potential future of Pokemon. And if they do this right, and I don't even know what right looks like. I talked about on the podcast things like, you know, um, open world action oriented combat versus turn based combat and uh, some other concepts I had. But those are just concepts off the top of my head. I'm not saying that that's the way these games should go. I don't know what way these games should go. That's why we need to see what the Pokemon company is doing. This is their baby. Uh, this is Game Freak's baby, and I'm going to hope and pray that they did it right. And I guess we'll find out more on Wednesday. I don't think we're going to fully know if it's quote-unquote right until the game comes out, but we could definitely see if it's going to start living up to some of the initial promise of the mere idea of an open-world Pokemon game brings to our minds. So again, we find that out next week, Wednesday at 6 a.m. Pacific, or for me, 8 a.m. Central Time. And you know what? You guys know I am going to be live streaming that event. I am not missing it. I know uh, I kind of slept through and forgot to stream the Indie World event, uh, so I do apologize for that, but that will not happen this time. The alarms will be set. We'll be kicking off the stream probably an hour early, getting our hopes and dreams and your guys' thoughts in. Uh, and guys, next week, uh, we also will have a second stream on that same day because we have our podcast. And yes, I am working on getting uh, one, maybe even two. Yes, possibly two. Don't quote me yet on that, but possibly two special guests on that are Pokemon experts. Because you guys know Eric and I aren't exactly experts uh, when it comes to the Pokemon franchise, but I know many other uh, YouTube friends and all that are, so I want to get them on so we can have a, a more in-depth conversation on not just Arceus, but also uh, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. And then again, any other games they might show. Pokemon Presents often have um, new game announcements, you know, whether it's like a Detective Pikachu 2 or something like that. So um, we'll stay tuned for that. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Rubblejance from Nintendo Prime. Feels kind of nice to be talking about some Pokemon today. I'll catch you guys in the next video.